I just want to say, you guys, while we're getting situated, I just want to say thank you because um, you guys are the fanatics. To come here at 8.30 in the morning for Bible study, man, you guys are fanatics for the Lord. You know what I mean? And that's a beautiful thing. And, and God needs more fanatics, not less. And, and, and I just want to say thank you because, like I say, a teacher is it's no, no good without a student. You know what I mean? What good is a teacher without students? A student is just as important as the teacher. You know, so if there's, you know, and I'm, I'm a student myself, okay, so, and I, like I like to say is the more I know about God, the more I realize I don't know. And the more I learn, the more I realize I need to learn. So, I'm in the same shoes. We're all students here, to hear from the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I really try to be Holy Spirit led in this. I'm really, I really, 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 really have seen how the Lord, how the Holy Spirit can move when I just get out of his way and let him do his thing. So I, I, it's not a curriculum. This is actually Holy Spirit stuff. I go where the Lord has been taking me and I try to share with you things that have really inspired me. I mean, they touch me and I know they'll touch you. Okay? Yeah, and to, just to add to that, Henry, uh, first of all, I want to just thank you for being the man of God and the, the witness that you are to us. His life is a testimony, right? Yeah. And uh, it's a good thing that uh, he would spend all the time that he does studying the scriptures, trying to figure out what, what, what he wants to say. And I, I know you've all seen this, but I just want to show you. That's, you know, this, <laughs> this, 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 and look at all this. You think this guy isn't in the Word every week? You know, these are his notes. He wants to share. He'll, he won't get. He won't get down to here <laughs> today. <laughs> I'll probably somewhere, get about there. Get somewhere. Uh, we'll probably get about to the second one. That's not very far. <laughs> Rich, look and at this Bible. I know Henry also <laughs> realizes that it's it's important for us to interact with each other. Amen. Look at this crazy Bible. That's insane. Yeah. So I, you know, it's. I want you to know. This is not going on in other Bible studies. It's not happening. Not, not anywhere. I, I don't know. Maybe you all know some. I'm really blessed that Henry has uh, shown the perseverance and the diligence and uh, discipleship to, to help mentor us. He's mentoring me. I'm being mentored. I'm not ashamed to say that. I'm, I'm blessed by, by what he does and how he studies. And uh, look, you know, we've been a lot, a, a lot on grace, and we've talked about it. And we say, hey, let's just keep going because this grace is what we need. And uh, you know, in addition to that, uh, I've been thinking about grace, Henry. Let me have another two minutes, all right? <laughs> and grace, <clears throat> when you learn something about somebody, okay, whether it, it's a friend of yours that is a, a male friend or a friend of yours that is a female friend, it, do, it doesn't matter. When you learn something about them and, and all of a sudden you realize, wow, this person is not who I thought they were. They are unbelievable. They're unbelievable. They're, they're gracious. They're loving. They're kind, they're forgiving, they love me, and they're a loving person. When you realize that and you consciously think about it, what happens? As a result of that, we become responsive to that, don't Amen. we? We become responsive, and we open ourselves up for what? We open ourselves up for relationship. Now that is the key word that I want to give you today. Relationship. You are building a relationship with the creator of the universe. The one who came and died for us to redeem us from our sin. That is, an inc that is the most incredible thing ever. So as we continue in this uh, session, in this season of teaching of grace, I want you to add and insert that word into our studies as Henry is teaching about grace I want you to think about this word relationship relationship 
relationship. Oh, he loves me. Oh, he forgave me. Oh, he gave me a gift of righteousness. Oh, oh, he loves me. I want to have, he wants to have a relationship with me and I want to have a relationship with him. So I just want you to think about that word. Henry, 935, 939, it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Father, we just come before you right now. We just bow in total submission to hear your voice, Father oh, God. Yes. We are the needy <laughs> ones, Father God. You are the giver. You said you, you, that we are, should be more blessed to give than to receive. Well, that's you asking us to be like you. You are more blessed to give to us than for us to ever even, for us to, to, to give to us and for us to give to you, Father God. You are more blessed to, to give than to receive. So Father, we're here and we are want to receive from you. Father God, our hearts are open, our mind is receptive. We all our, our tradition, we leave at the door, Father God, all the hindrances, all the problems, to, uh, every, all the, everything that the devil is putting out is an op obstacle in our way. We see it now as an opportunity to hear your voice, Father God. Let those problems bring us to you, not let our sin bring us to you, not from you. Let our sin be that, be, seeing our, Jesus becoming sin for us, being the bridge for us, that he bridged the gap, Father God, that sin is no longer an obstacle between us and you because you, Jesus, have paid the debt. Father, so we receive that and we walk in that now, Lord. Amen and amen. Whew. Amen. Deuteronomy 28. You're going to, oh boy, I want you guys to come away with some good news. Okay, come away with, you learned something today. I learned something today I didn't know. Okay? Did you like that? Yeah. It's what we're here for. Okay? This is this was this woke me up. Deuteronomy 28. Somebody hit me with it. Deuteronomy 28. Verse 1. This is where this is this is where Moses handed down the laws. Now, Moses handed down these laws. He he gave down now. If you look at Deuteronomy 28, you're gonna see a bunch of blessings. And then if you look at verse 15, you're gonna see some curses. Blessings for obedience, curses for disobedience. Okay? You with me? Yep. Blessings for obedience, curses for obe disobedience. He says in verse 28, he says, If you fully obey the Lord. Now understand, if you fully, two words, you fully obey the Lord, your God, your God, and carefully obey all his commands, I'll give you today. The Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on the earth. All these blessings will come, now if you obey all, right? All blessings if you obey all the commandments. Now there was like 600 some odd commandments. He's given a whole bunch of them, okay? All these blessings will come upon you and accompany if you obey the Lord your God. Now listen. Listen to this. This is Andrew Womack. Andrew Womack is, uh, is um, he, he, he's the the founder and president of, Bible, uh, of, of Karis Bible College over in Arizona. He's got a TV show, God, The Gospel Truth. It's TV, it's, it's worldwide TV ministry he's got. It's called The Gospel Truth. And he's huge. He's got missionaries. He's at the top of the leadership. And he's got missionaries, preachers, teachers, professors, administrators, all these people under him. And it, I went, went on his website and it just goes forever with all these people under him. He's at the top of, uh, top of it. Listen to what he says about this scripture. Powerful. And so this is only like a, uh, uh, a one minute clip. Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2, it says, All of these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you hearken diligently. Most people say, Well, that's the problem. I'm not hearkening diligently. Notice it says in verse 1, it says, Well, let me read it. It says, It shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I can. Some people will preach, see, you got to do all of these things. you got to keep those, all of these commandments if you want the blessings to come upon you. So there's some people that say, well, I know God wants to bless me, but I just don't qualify. I'm not worthy. But this was the Old Testament. I haven't got time to explain it in its entirety. But under the New Covenant, here's the way the New Testament believer reads this. It is coming to pass upon me because of what Jesus did and because I accepted him as my Savior and he hearkened diligently and observed all of the things. Therefore, oh. all of these blessings are coming oh. upon me and overtaking me. Oh. That's the way the New Testament believers should do oh. Are you feeling me? That's how you should read this today. Jesus said, I did not to him to abolish it. I came to fulfill it. 
He fulfilled that law that we have to do. He's telling you got to keep them all. You got to do this or you'll be blessed. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, it says that we have all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. And if you look at 4.15, it talks about curses for disobedience. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 that Jesus became a curse for you. That he became sin for you, that you might become the righteousness of God in Christ. You read this, you got to know how to read the Old Covenant. You got to put on your little glasses tinted in the blood of Jesus, tinted red because of the blood of Jesus, and you read that Old Testament. I see Jesus all over it. Amen. Jesus did it. That's right. He fully obeyed. That's Amen. why I can be blessed, blessed, blessed. And that's why there's no curses for disobedience. Jesus was cursed. Jesus took the curse upon himself. He was punished for me. He died for me. He was out of he was out of relationship with the Father so that I won't be. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He went through that so I will never be forsaken by God. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Booyah. Amen. Does that help you? Yeah. It helped me. Oh, easy now. <laughs> We're just getting started. We're just getting We're just started. Saying, yeah. <laughs> that, we're just, that's just the few, first few minutes. Yeah. Wait you ready? Watch this. Problem is we focus on our sin. We think our sin is so big. And why would God do this for me? How could he love me? How could he, why would God, well, God doesn't fellowship with sinners, does he? Mm. No, he actually dies for them. Fellowship. He died for sinners. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible said he, when he loved us so much that he died for us when we were his enemies. How much more he'll do for us now that we are his friends. Oh, more, not less. Mm. Watch. Check this. Are you ready? This is, now, this is Andrew Farley. He wrote a book called The Naked Gospel. He wrote a book. He's got a, a, he's got a way, website called um, God Without Religion. Andrew Farley. Andrew Womack, Andrew Farley, great guys, great preachers, so am I, so is our pastor here at this church, Pastor Brian Lorch, great preacher, okay, we yep. sing about it, you know, we talk, we, we shout about it, it's a big deal, grace, Amen. Amen. and that's why sin isn't with God, sin is not a big deal with God, your sin has been dealt with, your sin is not an issue with God as a believer, it's been dealt with, God was in Christ, not imputing it, the Bible says, it's not there, he looks at a sinner and he sees a saint. Amen. Who? Easy, Henry. So tone it down a little. Come on. You might scare people off. Don't do that. Okay. No, you won't be scared. You know, don't be scared. I always tell people that. I say, don't be scared. Okay, watch this. This is a one-minute click. This is Andrew Farley. This is what he talks about the size of your sin. Now listen, okay, check it out. You, you know, if you go to some of these, uh, if you go to, you know, there's this, he's talking about this professor, that this one guy, he's, talk, he's on a TV show and he's talking to the, the, the host of the TV show. And the host of the TV show said that, that, that people go to, um, if you go to a, like, a, 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 what do they call it, a mental institution? You know? Oh yeah, like a... Okay, they like said they what? won't even let Christians in there. They won't even let churches, church people in there because of all the guilt and condemnation that wow. religion mm. puts on. Puts yeah. on. yeah. And it shouldn't be that way. No. Because that's not grace. Grace shouldn't do that. That's what the, people the Bible are. says under grace there is no condemnation for those in Christ. None. Zero. Shouldn't be that way. Watch. <laughs> Good news, right? And here's... Wait, sorry. 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 Whew. Forget that I'm a pastor for a minute. Tell me, why, why are you so upset about it? And here's what he told me. He was the director of a huge uh, mental institution in Canada. And uh, he said three quarters of the people that are in there are in there because of Christianity, religion, and the mm. guilt and the shame that they suffer with. Mm. And then they come to us and we're trying to... I had never heard someone say that until he said it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The gospel shouldn't do that to people. No, I, but that's, that's where I was headed. I mean, mm. honestly, I was going to end up in a mental institution sure. or I was going to be rescued by God's grace. And fortunately, it was God's grace that rescued me. And, and I came to realize some radical things. I mean, you know, first and foremost, we, we tend to think that our sins are so big. And
and uh, the Bible was written by murderers. I mean, just just think about it. Just think about oh, it for a minute. Yeah. I mean, Moses killed an Egyptian in rage. He wrote yep. a lot of the Old Testament. <laughs> David, David yep. put a guy on the front lines of his army so that that guy would die so that he could take that guy's wife. Yep. Now, that's not nice. That's he not nice. Of, he wrote much of the Psalms. And then songs. Paul, he gets spoken about Paul stood by and gave hearty approval at the stoning of Stephen and was known for killing Christians. Yep. Now, uh, who have you killed lately? I mean, how big are your sins again? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe our sins are small and our God is big and he has qualified us. And that's what grace is. Grace is, is not being infatuated with the size of your sin. It's being obsessed with the size of your Savior. Amen. Wow. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. You talk a lot in the book about real. Wow. Yeah. The wow. Naked Gospel. I bought it. It rocks. It's a book called The Naked Gospel. And he's got another book called God Without Religion. Get those books. They're not that expensive. They're not that big. You can get them on, on, on Kindle or you can get them on Nook and just read it on your phone. And and, and, and and boy, he come, he the, Andrew Farley is really good for coming against a lot of the things that are being taught from pulpits today, that are wrong. Okay. Mm. Okay. Right. Mm. Who? Yeah. Here's another one. Ready? Just call. I got the, this. Is only three minutes. Said a lot of things. I haven't got time to go back and summarize it all. I got started from Luke chapter 2, verse 14, where the angels sang, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. We're during this Christmas season, and people are talking about peace among men, but that wasn't talking about peace among men. The angels were glorifying God that the war between God and man was over. There was peace from God towards men. And this week, I've been emphasizing the price that Jesus paid. Most people, when you say that God isn't angry anymore, that there's now peace from God, they immediately say, but what about sin? And they start magnifying how bad sin is and how sin's got to be judged. And I've been saying every way I could think of that sin has been judged in the flesh of Jesus. And instead of magnifying how bad sin is, I've been saying that Jesus more than paid for our sin. It's not that sin isn't bad and that it's not damaging and not hurtful, but whatever the price of sin was, Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. Jesus more than paid for it. So that when I say that God is not angry, that there is peace from God towards men, that that is not a wrong statement. It's because Jesus forever changed everything. Jesus is the focal point in human history. When Jesus died, he forgave our sins and totally changed the way that God deals with us. You know, if for some reason, I can't even imagine this, but if for some reason I had a group of people that hated me and just tried to do nothing but damage to me, and because of that, you know, there was just tremendous hostility, and I wanted to do you damage. But if I was able to love you so much that I'd take one of my sons, and I would kill my son and take out everything I wanted to do, everything that you deserved, and yet I put that on my son, and if I killed him and punished him for what you had done, I would not do something like that unless it solved the problem. Mm. If all it did was mm. make the problem a little bit less, and now if the people would still toe the line and do everything good, maybe it would, you know, there could be peace between us. I wouldn't go to that kind of an expense if, unless I knew that it solved the problem. Yeah. Likewise, God would not have sent Jesus here to just pay a portion of our debt, mm. and then maybe we could take the little bit of help that he gave us, and if we lived holy enough and were worthy, we could deserve and earn the rest of our salvation. That's not the way that it was. God sent his son and he paid for us because we couldn't do anything for ourselves. On our program yesterday, I was using Isaiah. Did you get that? Yeah, He's saying, he, it's like I would not sacrifice my son, it, my only son, my only begotten son, my only child. I would not sacrifice him to save you if it didn't fix the problem. 
if you didn't do the job, if Good there's still, oh, well, you still got to live holy. And if you fail, man, well, then, you know, this doesn't apply to you. No, this applies. Hmm. Big time. Hmm. It's not just a down payment. It's not just a down payment. <laughs> yeah, it's a full payment. Yeah. 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 That's powerful, isn't it? Yeah. Are you feeling you want to hear one more? Yes. Yeah, let's hear one more. Because this is going to go where we're going. This is just kind of warm you up. <laughs> okay. These are clips off the recordings. I listen to this stuff all the time, and I, I hear a certain thing. That I got. I need to back that up. I need to tape that that little piece, that little nitpick. I need to save that, and hear that again and again and again and again. That's why grace has to be hammered in you. It's like a nail in a piece of wood. You want that note? You want that wood to hold? You want that to be able to hold your house up? Well, you got to nail it and nail it and nail it and nail it and nail it, and eventually it will hold. And that's what it is with grace. You got to hammer grace in people's heads because there's a lot of false doctrine out there, a lot of tradition going on. There's a lot of mixture of law and grace. You see that how we read, read that in Deuteronomy 28? You can't mix that message with the new covenant message. You got to put Jesus all, all over that to read that. Well, it doesn't go with our own common sense either. Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, that's what we... Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Because I think that's what he's going to say right here. Yeah. What he's about to say right here. It's funny you said that. <laughs> yeah. Because that's the point he makes. Yeah. He says that there, there's no role model for grace. No, there isn't. Your parents didn't treat you with grace. You take that cookie, you're going to get a weapon. You know, you, 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 you don't show up for work, you're going to lose your job. <laughs> there, there, there's no role model for grace. Nobody deals with you with grace and says, I'm going to just give you whatever you don't deserve. You're going to get it. Guaranteed forgiveness. Guaranteed unconditional love. You know, what, your whole record wiped away, past, present, and future. No, there's no role model for that. No. That's why people, it's a, a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. That's why grace is hard to accept. We expect consequences. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I, I just uh, saw of, uh, like, there's always um, a situation where someone could help us take the burden and do a job that it might be hard uh, for someone to do and someone else decide to take that burden to do that hard job that someone else might have trouble doing. But and that person's gonna take that pain to, to do that job for that person. And uh, God um, sent um, Jesus to, um, um, to do the, to um, take over, do the hardest part of uh, human suffering yeah. by the enemy spirit, by Satan. Satan's worst um, uh, effect on human beings' death. So that's what he wants for human for human being. But but then uh, God sent Jesus to um, to be a role model to okay, well, to let, go past that. Let me let me touch to on that because that. Jesus didn't just do what's hard. He did what's impossible. Mm. Okay? That Sermon on the Mount? Mm. Impossible. impossible. Christian life is impossible. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody can be righteous. No, good, nobody can be good enough. Nobody can, nobody can keep all the laws. That's why the Holy Israel was living under a curse. That's why God in grace gave them the animal sacrificial system so that they didn't have to suffer the curses that are, they were under. That, that, see, God didn't leave them buried in the fact that we can't do all these. You know what? He, oh, we're done. We're fried. Well, that's the point of the law. That's why he gave the law. So you should, could be buried in your mess and be, see how much you need a sacrifice. And God, in grace, it was always been your faith in the grace of God. It was never your performance. Gee, how well are you doing? No, uh, terrible. Here's my sacrifice. That's why I'm bringing a sacrifice. Look at the animal. The animal had to be unblemished. The animal had to be a perfect sacrifice. It had to be a perfect sacrifice. You brought that. The reason you're bringing it is because I'm, I'm dirty. Thank you. know, he didn't say how... how how well you been living? You been doing everything right? No, um, sacrifice, right? That's that's what that's what makes you. That's it was way that way in the Old Testament. It's that way in the New Testament. The only difference is that in the Old Testament, that was had to be constantly repeated. It was a constant reminder of your sins. It never really cleansed you. That's why Hebrews chapter ten says you're perfected forever in Christ Jesus. Chapter ten says those sacrifices could never remove could never remove them. They could only cover them. This sacrifice, Jesus Christ, removes them. They're gone. Even says there shouldn't. That's what we're going to look at now. That's why he says that there shouldn't even be any 
consciousness of sin. Whoa, what? what? Wow. We're going to hear that right now. There should, he says in Romans chapter 10 that if those sacrifices worked, there would be no more consciousness of sin. Now we think, what do you mean? I shouldn't even be aware that I sin? Wait, it's not saying that. What it's saying, if you go to most new, new, new translations, if you go to New Living, the NIV, you go to any of these other ones, they say that there would be no more sense of, no, no more a guilty conscience. It's talking about guilt. It's talking about, oh no, I'm condemned. Oh no, oh, oh no, God's going to get me. None of that. There should be no more sin consciousness as far because sin is ultimately against God. So the sin consciousness is what Adam did when he sinned. He hid from God. Right, right. Sin conscious. There should be no more hiding from God. No more sin conscious. Yeah, yeah I'm aware of my sin. Yeah, it grieves my spirit when I sin. But as far as any problems with God because of my sin, dealt with. Problems been solved. And I put my faith all in him and what he did, not what I do. How? And it's almost too good to be true, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Listen, and people right away say, yo, well, what about how? You know, what's the I'm going to show you how we, what, how we, how do we change? Let's go there right now. And then I'll go there. But I want you to see, how do we change? Henry, what are you saying? We, we can just sin? I'm going to go there too in a minute. Are you saying we can just sin? You're saying it's no big deal? We can just sin? It doesn't matter? Oh, uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. About Deuteronomy 21, and I want to share. I was just at this conference yesterday, and um, and I haven't read this book, but I think it's pretty good. It's called Love Revolution, and this brother, he's been a pastor for years, and he basically said that the Lord showed him a contrast between, like when we think about like the two greatest commandments, right? They said in the Old Testament is love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, yada yada. The second one is love your neighbor as yourself. Everyone would say that, right? But what was Jesus' command was love one another as I have loved. Yeah. And that's exactly what you're saying. It's like, it's not about, I'm going to love God it, with all my strength, but it's through His love. Like, that's, it, we yeah. can't do it. This, we yeah. can't do it. We need to be filled with His love. See, his love is in us, and it flows out to other people. Most people that don't understand grace, they see that scripture as just a scripture commanding us to love, because a new commandment, it's a commandment. Uh, and we see that as a commandment to get out there and start loving people. Mm -hmm. I don't see it that way. Mm -hmm. Under, because I understand grace, mm -hmm. I see that as a commandment you receive my love Amen. so that you can go out there and love them. Can't. There you go. Can't give what you don't receive. Bam! <laughs> That's why he says we love because he first Glory loved you. us. That's why Jesus said that you can't even come to me unless the Father first draws you to me. Yeah. So his whole book we can't even go to him. Even our faith is a gift. We know with that scripture that says we could, we're saved by grace through faith. And it says that even that, it says, uh, that not, not, not of works, but even that is a gift from God that no man can boast. And most people think that, oh, that gift is faith, or is it grace? Which is it? It's all of it. Oh, faith. Concept. It's not one of the, it's not your faith. Yeah, your faith is a gift. The Bible says that he has dealt to each man the measure of faith. faith. Our faith is a gift. Grace is a gift. In and of itself, it's a gift. I mean, that's a, a no-brainer on that one. But the whole package is a gift. You can't even come to him unless the Father first draw you to him. Life is a gift. Yeah. Every breath, I'm dependent on him. Who? That sun burning in the sky to keep us alive, the rain, everything, it's all a gift from God. He's taking, he's the one serving us. Amen. That's good. Ho! Oh, let's wake up. Let's stop being, like I said a few weeks ago, there's a lot of sleeping Christians out there. They don't get it. We're, I mean, this captures your heart, and that's what I want you to see. How do we change? How do we change? Go to 2 Corinthians 3.18. Oh, boy. So how do we change? What are you saying, Henry? We can just sin. It doesn't matter. Nothing. No, let me tell you what changes you. Okay, come on. Help me. 2 Corinthians what? 2 Corinthians 3.18. I want to help you here. So we can get our minds off ourselves. Stop being preoccupied with yourself and your sin. And let's focus. He says, you, he, says he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on me because you're trusting in me. Amen. Not you and your little pathetic self. Stop focusing and stop saying, oh, I'm so unworthy. Oh, I'm so pathetic. Oh, God, I'm such a, oh, I'm so sinner. Oh, man. Get your mind off of you and focus on the one who loves you and died for you and loves you as pathetic as you are. <laughs> Me being pathetic is no, 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 that's a no-brainer. That's no question. That's why I need a savior. That's why he, that's why he died for me because I, I am all that. I'm, a, I'm the chief of sinners. Amen. 
Thank God God had mercy on me, the chief of sinners. Mercy, chief. Who? Did you get it? Yeah. Let's stop thinking me, me, me and think him, him, him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That is a worth clapping about because that's the mind scale that we should be. That's the good news. It's good, the gospel is good news. It's great news. And that's what captures you. I'm going to show you right now how it changed. It, it's a heart capture. 2 Corinthians 3.18. Did I say that? Yep. Yes. You guys are already there and I'm yep. rambling on. You're not, you're not rambling. And thank no. you. I appreciate it because I listen to these. I listen to my recording. These are recorded. You can get Dil uh, Dylan Scolades, his website. It's, you can subscribe to Dylan Scolades. And he's got all our past Bible studies for about the past 12 or so since he started recording them. And I'm blown away. You too. I'm like, I couldn't repeat that in a million thank years. Thank you, Dylan. Thank I'm listening. I'm like, that's me? Oh. That's Holy Spirit. That's not you. <laughs> that's holy. That's God. Amen. Oh. No, come on, let's go. Okay, you want to see this? Come on. Second Corinthians three eighteen. Is that what I said? Yep. Yeah, do it. Come on, let's look at this. Okay, I want you to see this. I'm going to dissect for you. This you don't see this on the surface. You need, you know, it's a little dissecting here. Okay. This is what it says. This is going to help you. But we all, all of us. With unveiled face, that means the mask comes off. Mm. Okay, on, like the that. real you, oh. the dirty, Ooh. the nasty. Oh. Okay, <laughs> right? Huh? The, the, the right? Mercy. The, 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 the jealous, the angry, the hateful, the 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 the, 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 the prideful, the arrogant, the, 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 the greedy, the selfish, the mean-spirited, the cold-hearted. You know, the the, the whole package. The lusting, the perverse, the whatever. Glutton. Glutton, yeah, everything. Yeah. Unmasked, that's me. Yeah. Unveiled face, beholding as, my Bible, the New King James, it says it's beholding in a glass. Anybody have that? Yes. Yeah. My New King James, it says it beholding in a, in a mirror. Because that's what he's talking about. Uh -huh. Okay, so now you're looking with your unmasked self, your nasty, ugly, dirty self, you're looking in the mirror, and what do you see? The glory of the Lord. The Lord. Woo! Wow. The Lord! Yeah. As He is, so are you in this world. You are one in Christ. The Lord! Right? Wow. Being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Who does it? The, the Lord. Spirit of God the does it. Mm. I plant a seed. Mm. Apollos, what Paul said, I plant a seed, Apollos waters it, but God has to make it grow. Mm -hmm. God has to make it grow. I'm planting seeds of grace. You know, whether you want to take that as a license of sin, that's not on me. I will tell you that God forbid that you think that. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not it. No. But that's how you change by seeing Christ in you. Christ in you. Package deal, done deal. It's yeah. done. Amen. Amen. Ephesians says that we are created after God in righteousness and true, true holiness. holiness. Created that way. That's what it means when it says that you are a new creature. Uh, God's workmanship created in Christ unto good works. We don't, he says you don't work for it, but you become God's workmanship created in Christ unto good works. So any works you do to try and get this, trying to please God, trying to please the wrath of God, trying to make him happy, trying to get him to be pleased with me, Dead works. But if you want to work from what you've already got, that he's already pleased with you. Already got your picture in his wallet. Got your picture on the fridge. On the mantle. Oh, there's my girl. On the fireplace That's my mantle. girl. That's my boy. Yeah. I love, I love, man, I don't like everything he does, but I sure love him. Mm. Mm. Amen. Crazy about him, because that's my boy. Created in my image, again, through Jesus Christ, you are recreated. You are created. That's what he means. You're a new creature. You're created in the image of God again. Adam threw that all away, and you were created, the Bible says in, in, in uh, Genesis chapter yeah, 4. Genesis 5.1. Yeah, 5.1. That, 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 that when Adam had children, that it's they were created likeness, in his likeness, likeness. In his image. Not God anymore, because sin did to ruin that. But when you're created in Christ, recreated in Christ, you are created in the image of God. God sees you, he sees in the mirror himself. 
As he is, so are you in this world, the Bible says. Whoa! And when you get this, the, the Bible says that I, I pray that the communication of your faith might be made effective by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you. That's right. That's how you want to have effective ministry. You want to have an effective sharing of your faith. Start talking about what you already got. That's how it's effective. Start talking about who I already am, that God's already pleased with me. It's a done deal. He paid the price and I'm in. And you're in if you're a believer. The only problem is what you, uh, tradition ruins, blood puts a blockage. Oh yeah, but, no, but Jesus. Mm. But, 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 but Jesus. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He wants to rub your junk, your face in the mud, right? Mm, ah, dirty, ah, dirty. God don't love you. God don't want to talk to you. I ain't got nothing for you, bad boy. Accuser. Whoa. Are you feeling so? That's how you change mm. your identity. Right. In Christ. Okay, now let's go. You want to hear another one? Yep. So, these are good, huh? I know, huh? These are good, right? Yeah. A am I helping you? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you're getting in the boat. You know what? If you get in the boat with Noah, like Noah got in the boat, when Noah got in the boat, right? Yeah. You know who closed him in? God. God closed the door. That's the sealing of the Holy Spirit. Getting in the boat is you getting on board with Jesus. Mm. Only his family got in with him. Nobody else. Mm. That's you, the family of God. Children, children and children of God. Believers in Jesus Christ. Get That's the, the family. You're in the boat. Now, if Noah, now if that, that little, that boat started rocking on the waves and it started going, whoa, whoa, because for 40 days it was poured, flooded the whole earth. Yeah. Now, if no, now, now, if Noah was in that boat, he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And if he fell, <laughs> where did he fall? He falls in the boat. Oh, Come on. Right. Yeah. He didn't fall in if the you fall, you're still in Christ. Mm. You're still on board. Good. Yeah. The wooden cross, you don't the fall out boat. of the boat. Why? Because God closed that door and you are sealed in the, that relationship wow. by the Holy Spirit. That's good. Deep. <laughs> That's why he talks about the kind of... 100%, please remove charger. Oh. It's charged. It, tell, it tells me when it's charged. <laughs> it's, the Holy, it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you, are, you are charged. Listen, you are 100%. What's heavy, what's heavy, if you look at that story... If you look at that story, that boy, that that that, that was God was even. This is important. This is important. There's no there's no in in, in 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 unimportant details in the Bible. He even tells Noah what kind of wood to use. Resin yes. wood. That's the most water repent, uh, repellent repellent water, uh, but wood. Okay, so he tells him to use resin wood, and he tells him to use pitch tar to seal it. That's the sealing of the Holy Spirit. That seals yeah. you in so that none of the water, which represents the wrath of God, none of the rain, the water, will get into that boat because God's pouring out his wrath. Pouring out that rain represents the wrath of God. And he says, none of that wrath is going to get into you because resin wood, pitch, I close the door, you're secure. Amen. Come on. Mm. Don't get me started. Get started. Get started. <laughs> Don't stop. Yeah. Are you guys feeling Bible yeah. study right now? Yeah, 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 Bible yeah, yeah. study. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I see people inviting friends, and I see why. Because you know what? You're hearing some good truth stuff we need to be hearing. Yeah. We're not hearing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this class is growing, and I'm, thank you, Jesus. This Holy Spirit <laughs> stuff. I don't take credit right for that. I spent four hours on my hike yesterday. Mm -hmm. Just going alone with the Lord. I got my little Nook device like Dylan has here. I take my little Nook device with all my books. I got about 100 different books, about 12 different Bibles, and I just go on my hike and I study the Word. And here's why I'm able to roll like this. You know why? Because I preach when I walk. Ooh. I practice public preaching Ooh. when Man. I hike. Not public speaking, public preaching when Homiletics. I hike. Homiletics. And that's why I can roll like this. You're blessing the trees. I, one guy came around the corner. One guy came around the corner one time and he says, you convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> and what does that do for your faith? Huh? As you do that, does, do you think that that is also doing something for your own faith? Actually, faith comes by hearing the word of God. And you know, I'm just spending time in the word and that, yeah. that builds your faith. And that's what I tell people. I tell people, you cannot trust somebody you don't know. Mm. So it builds your faith to get to know him. Good. And when you know the true him. 
He said, this is eternal life that you know the one true God and the one whom he sent. The true God. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. If you're not free, it's because you're not hearing the truth. There should be some freedom. And not freedom to sin, freedom from sin. I mean, really free from sin. Really. Knowing that that price has been paid. In full. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I get loud. I listen to some of my tapes. I'm like, boy, I get loud, man. Oh, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't maintain it. I can't hold it back. I'm just. <laughs> the watch, the watch is loud. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so this, uh, this, is, this is five minutes in sin conscious. Okay, we're running out of time. No. We'll go for it. No. We got started, <laughs> That's what we want to do. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That is just radical. That is radical. That is so different than the way most people think. And brothers and sisters, again, I'm not trying to scold anybody, but I'm trying to make my point and get this across. I guarantee you, most of you are sin conscious. I'm not saying that to be little. Yeah, I struggle with the same thing. It's just ground into you. People don't teach, treat you by grace. People don't say, whatever you do, I'm going to love you regardless. There isn't a role model for this. Your employer doesn't hire you by grace and say, I want you to know whether you ever show up, whether you do your job, regardless of how you act, I'm a grace man. And so it doesn't matter what you do. You have guaranteed cost of living raises, promotions, and all of these things, whether you ever do anything or not. That's not the way your employer hires you. It's all based on performance. And so everything in the world is based on performance. If you don't perform, you get fired. You get demoted. Even in marriage, we're supposed to love each other unconditionally, but I've dealt with hundreds and hundreds of people that have come to me for counseling, and they always say, well, I'm mad at them because of this. And I say, well, you're supposed to forgive them. Well, I know, but they did this. You know what you're saying? You're giving that person what they deserve. You don't love them unconditionally. Even in marriage, we treat people based on performance. We treat our kids based on performance. We tell them that when they do good, we sing their praises. When they do bad, we sing their, uh, what do you, I don't know. Anyway, we punish them. That's what we're asking. We hurt them. And so you know what? Just everything around us is all based on performance. But the Lord made a sacrifice to where he forgave you. You didn't deserve to be forgiven. No one, not a single one of us deserves salvation. None of us deserve to be forgiven. God just forgave you because he's a good God. God is a good God and he loves you and God is forgiven. And because of that, you know what? We shouldn't have a sin consciousness. And yet most of us are just modeling our relationship with God after the way our fathers treated us or the way somebody else has treated us. But you know what? God is greater than any person you've ever dealt with. God has forgiven all of your sin and you should have no more sin consciousness. And yet the average Christian approaches God by saying, oh God, I come before you so humbly today. Lord, forgive me of my many sins. It's like we feel like we have to mention all of our sins and make sure we mention it quickly. Or if we mention it, then God might not mention it. But if we don't mention it, God's going to mention it. We just have a sin consciousness constantly. There are some of you that every time you go before God, you got to cry. you got to be sad. Oh, God, and you're just pleading with God and you feel so ungodly. And in the natural realm, you may be acting ungodly. But if you are truly born again in your spirit, you are the righteousness of God. You are born again. And the Bible says in John chapter 4, verse 24, that God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you approach God in your spirit and you say, oh, God, I'm just so ungodly. I'm so unworthy. How could you love me? You're in the flesh. You aren't in the spirit. Yeah. Your spirit's not defiled. Your spirit's not ungodly. Your spirit is righteous and holy and pure. And some of you think, well, that, not my spirit. You don't know what I've been doing. You don't know what God has done. Bam! Yeah. You were created in righteousness and true holiness, Ephesians 4.24. And then Ephesians 1.13 says, once you were created in righteousness and true holiness, you were vacuum-packed, sealed by the Holy Spirit. 
So when you sin as a Christian, sin will affect your physical body. It'll give Satan an opportunity against you in the physical realm. And it will affect your mind and your emotions, your soulish realm. But your spirit is sealed. Sin can't penetrate that seal of the Holy Spirit. And you are created in righteousness and true holiness. And you do not lose that right standing with God. Your spirit is as pure right this moment as the morn moment it was born again. And your spirit is as pure right now as it will ever be in all of eternity. Amen. As Jesus is, so are you in this world. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. You are righteous in your spirit and it's sealed. It never fluctuates. And God is a spirit. And if you worship him in spirit and in truth, then you can come right before him. Even though you haven't done everything that you should have done in your physical actions, God is a spirit and he relates to you spirit to spirit and he sees you clean and holy and pure, even though you aren't that way in your physical man. Man, that is good news. Good. Damn. Damn. And so. Okay, oh, I, commercial break. Commercial break. Commercial break. <laughs> Okay, guys, I, look, I know a lot of you uh, are coming to me and saying, hey, let's start earlier. Uh, I've I even had one person say, let's start at 730. <laughs> but look, I, I want you to know, I know that not all of us are on that bandwagon yet. But let me tell you this, as you begin to think about that. That is, this hour that we're having right now is the, um, is the most important mm. hour that you will ever have in your life week over week right now. Absolutely. This is a season. It isn't gonna last forever, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But right now, God has got us in a season, and I want you each to respond, okay? I want you to be here on time if you can. I want you to uh, press in. You know, look, look for this relationship and, uh, and pressing into the Word of God throughout the week and then come here ready to get charged up again okay that was the lord speaking to us all right with that little charger thing so i went i want you to know i went and i, I went over and i got i asked for permission for us to start earlier okay and i'll let you know uh what what the result of that is when i'm told okay i'm sure it'll be all right and that's what i was told but we need to work things out with uh uh the the guy who opens the building to make sure that they can have the building open for what us by that time. Explain yeah, okay, yada, yada. You know, I, they, they won't let me have a key, Peter, I'm sorry. Uh, but, but yeah, but here's what I want you to do right now. I want everybody, you, I want you to grab your cell phone. Everybody got their cell phone? All right, and I want you to put my telephone number in your cell phone, okay? Let me know when you're ready. Some of you already have it, but <clears throat> I'll repeat it a couple of times. Here we go. 650-678-2065. I would like for you to please send to me your email address. And when you do text me, Text me your name, too, because if I don't have your name in my database, then just your phone number will come up, okay? And I won't know who's texting me. And then I'll be texting you back and saying, who is this? Not everybody knows your name. Rich, rich Young. Young. He's a rich young man. Yeah. If, the rich it's, young ruler. It's kind of corny, but it, you can remember my name that way, okay? I'm rich. I'm young. She oh, married someone who's rich and young. Rich young man. And you got oh, it. What was it? <laughs> Matthew 13, okay. So one more time. My telephone number is 650-678-2065. I want you to communicate with me. I want you to tell me what you think about starting at eight. And I want you to, and I, I want to be able to communicate with you. I'm not a guy who uh, communicates uh, every day and every other day okay I'm a guy who you know you might text me and I might get back to you in four or five days okay so I don't want you to be offended by that uh, just just take it with a grain of salt and I, I, I love you and I'll get back to you as soon as I can so text me please give me your email address and then it will be easier for me to communicate to you what we're doing when when I get the word okay and uh, just one more time, and I'm back to you, Henry, and that is, hey, 
this is the most important hour of your week be here be here i'm telling you this because i love you amen and amen. because the love of god has come over me and i know i i know i am in being impacted and the and it's because we're getting the word of god henry thank you for bringing the word of god to us and uh i'm going to get a facebook page going for us and we're going to spread this grace around Amen. is there enough grace for everybody absolutely there's enough, enough air for bird <laughs> enough water for fish there's enough <laughs> grace for our sin yeah <laughs> yeah grace to run the race. so yeah so okay so i'm running out of time here so i'm just going to kind of go somewhere else because lord i'm going i try to go where the holy spirit is leading me yeah now now what's interesting there's a story in the, in the bible about um uh, about four, four the seed uh, about a sower going out to sow seed right and there's four different types of soil. of soil, and the soil represents the hearts. Mm -hmm. there's four, what's interesting to me is that only one fourth of that seed that is takes root, right? Because there's four different soils, but only one out of four takes root and actually produces a crop. That's pretty heavy. Because he said, he, Jesus, didn't Jesus say that many are going to take the wide road? Okay, if you even find this little, the skinny, the, the narrow road, yep. right? He talks about two trees, yep. one's bearing bad fruit, the one's bearing good fruit. He talks about two houses, one built on sand, one built on, 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 on rock. Nation, yeah. yeah. So he's talking about two houses, two trees, right, and two paths. You know, it's in, there's, there's two. And a lot of people take that one. A lot of people are on, on shifting sand. They're, they're, they're just sinking. They may be Christian or they may not be, but they're not enjoying their Christian life. Mm -hmm. They're asleep. You know, some of us need to be wake, woke, wake up to the truth so that we got something to talk about, something to shout about. Mm -hmm. Something to really, you know, so my ministry takes off. Yeah. You know, I, I got a jail ministry. Tomorrow I go into the jail and I do a jail ministry. I minister to these convicts because I was a convict myself. And I came out of that jail. lifestyle. And, and I'm going in there, and I'm blown away every time I go in there. I'm like, I used to be taking in chains in there. And you know, I used to go through those same doors I'm going through now with my Bible in my hand and going in there to preach the gospel. I used to go in in an orange jumpsuit and all that, that same program. And I'm blown, you, could you imagine that? I'm blown away. Mm -hmm. They would even let me in there with my background, my history, but mm -hmm. it's been 20 years yeah. mm -hmm. clean, so that makes all the difference, you know, so. Yeah. But anyways, let's look at this. Okay, let's look at Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13. Because this is why this, what Jesus, what, what um, number rich, one, rich. number one, rich, number one, I know, uh, number one, rich, rich is, is, is one of the leaders here at the church. And, and I've only been coming to the church for about two, for about two, three years now, Dylan, right? About right. two, two, three about years, something three like years, that, something like, between two, two and a half years. And, and, and I started coming to, to Rich's Bible study, but, but he liked what he was hearing, that he humbled himself enough to sit back and just say, you know what? I want to hear more. Matter of fact, I want to move this from upstairs to downstairs where others can hear this. And so he's been discipling me into this. And so I, God, God placed Rich in my life to kind of help me get a platform. Okay, because he, he knows this is, this is solid. Well, it is. And, and we, our pastor says the same thing. Our pastor here stands before the whole church and he says, You cannot, you cannot, you cannot lose your salvation. He just said that. Yeah. He said that. And a few weeks ago, he said straight up, he said that what God said to Jesus when he came out of the water at baptism, he said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And he says the same thing about you. He ain't just saying he's pleased with you. He's saying, I'm well pleased with you. Amen. Mm. He said that. Mm. He's saying the same thing I'm saying here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a grace preacher. Yeah. Thank yeah. God for that. We need more of that, not less. Uh, Henry, I uh, just want to add to it. Uh, Jesus said... We cannot lose salvation if we stay in His Word. Off the bat, I don't know where you're coming up with that, but off the bat, much of what Jesus said, He hadn't gone to the cross yet. He talked about being uh, born again, but no one was born again until after He went to the cross. He talked about a lot of things that did not apply to us under the, after the cross. After the cross, you are forgiven. Your faith gets you saved. Before the cross, he was talking to people that are still under the law. He could not preach grace to these law people that are living under a, 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 a covenant of law. Because there had been uh, no sacrifice uh, yet. Stay, yeah. Meaning uh, stay, stay in the word by grace. 
Huh? Stay in the word by grace. Do listen. L let me tell you something. My mom, she didn't read the Bible. W what about the thief on the cross? He didn't. What did he do? Did he read his Bible? Uh, he went. He only, got. Only if you can. Yeah. Only if you can. Not. He, it's not just not a, 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 not just a it's, not it's not just it's not ha halfway. Let me tell you like this, okay? Let me help you, okay? Yeah. If the Holy Spirit is in you, you're gonna have a hunger for the Word. Mm. It's, it's just gonna happen. It, it's, it's, it's gonna him. It's gonna be God working in you to will and to do His good pleasure. He's gonna do that. He's not trying to get you to do it for me. He does that for you. Okay. That's thank you. Yeah. <laughs> amen, amen, yeah. That's heavy, huh? Yeah. yeah. You got to get it right. He, Jesus said, I did not come to be served. I came to serve you. And he's showing you what God is like. Get it right. Don't stop thinking that I got to do this for him. Look at what Jesus did for you. That needs to sink in. Cha. Yeah, it takes, it takes, time. Time. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. To be hammered, yeah. yeah. And watch what he does in and through you when you get it right. You've got to start from the right place. Okay, So because he says we're not saved by works, but we're saved unto good works. That will come from you when you get here. You'll get there. Don't put the, like I say, don't put the horse before the cart. Mm -hmm. Right? Don't put the cart before okay. the we horse. Got, we got about five, okay, let's go. The cart before the horse. I'm glad you asked that, Mike, because a lot of people struggle with that. And, and you need to understand. Right? I, I want to help you here. You can just keep coming. You'll, you'll get it. Okay. Just keep coming. Mm -hmm. You're asking questions, and that's beautiful, mm -hmm. but you need to hear the answers. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, those questions are going to keep coming. Mm -hmm. You need to focus on the answers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Bam. Mm. <laughs> okay. Matthew 13, 36. Yeah. Okay, yeah, right? Okay, that's, that's where he explains it. Basically, okay, look, we'll walk through this real quick, okay? Um, Sandy? Did you say 36? Well, 13, 1, we're going to go, we're going to go, go, go as far as, uh, let's see, uh, uh, go to 9, 13 to 9. 13, 13, 1 to 9, or? 13, 1 to 9. Okay. Oh, no, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. On that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him, <coughs> so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things and parables, saying, a sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. The other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Amen. Okay, now let's jump to what was the other one, Dylan? Thirty... Thirty-six. Huh? Thirty-six? 30 36 yeah. Okay, this is where he explains it, right? Okay, because he kind of goes through some stuff, okay, but then yeah. it's like the, the disciples are perplexed. Like, many of us are perplexed on what does this, all this mean? What is he saying? Well, the disciples who were with Jesus, they were perplexed a lot of the time, too. They didn't have a clue. What in the world is he talking about? <laughs> you know? Thir it, no, 1336. And what, what's nice, what's nice is this time we hear him asking. Yeah. What does this mean? Yeah. Right? Verse 36. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain us this parable of the weeds in a field. We, can't, we don't get it. He answered, The one who owes the, sow the seed is the son of God. Okay? And the field is the world. And the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The, har um, the harvest is the end of the age and the harvest of the angels. Wait, that's not it, Dylan. Reapers of the angels. That's and not it. 18, Just right? as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so it will be at the what end. You want, uh, no, 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 no. That, no, verse 18. Yeah, thank yeah, you. That's, that's not it. Oh, sorry. We'll start again. Thank you. Uh, Go ahead. Why don't you read it? Oh, I'll read it. Okay. Then, uh, here then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the words of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away, and snatches it away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one on whom seed was sown beside the road. 
and the one on whom the seed was sown on the rocky places, this is the man who hears the word and he immediately receives it of joy, yet because he has no firm root in himself, but is only temporary, and when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, I should stop there, immediately he falls away. And the one on whom the seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man who hears the word, and the worry of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And the one on whom seed was sown on the good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Now I highlighted one phrase in it that stuck out to me. And it's in the very first chapter 18. It says, listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, that's why we need to be here. That's what made me think of this when you were saying that we need to be here. All right? And look what he says at the end. Verse 23. He says, but the, talking about the good seed that fell on good soil that is productive. He says, but the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding 160 and 30 times what was sown. Understanding is key. That's why Bible study, church that doesn't... Do it. They eat, we, we do worship for a half hour. The pastor preaches for a half hour. You know, and they, you need Bible study. You need to be listening to some good teaching. Mm -hmm. You need to be. We need to be studying yes. the Word of God. Because mm -hmm. you need to not just know what it says. You need to know. You, mm -hmm. you, 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 and you need to take time for that. Yeah. yeah. One yeah. hour is not enough. The Holy Spirit <laughs> is the one who allows us to understand the parables. Yeah. He's the one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spiritual spiritual Active. things are spiritually discerned, and we're totally totally depend on the Holy Spirit to do that. Correct. But like I said. If you don't know him, you you won't trust him. Yeah. Rich, you want yeah. to close? Yeah. So we'll, let's pray and uh, praise God for his word. Amen. And I'll, I want to let you in on a little secret here. I am a very slow learner. If you don't believe me, <laughs> I see a couple of you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a very slow learner. You know what? And if you don't believe me, just ask my wife. <laughs> She'll let you know. I'm here to testify. I'm here, she's here to testify. I'm a witness. But you know, once I do get it, I get it. You get it. Okay? And then it's like, I, I don't lose it. She'll tell you that too. So you know what? If you don't entirely understand it, okay, just like what that, the scripture just said there, you hear the word and you're like, wait a minute. I don't quite understand it. Okay? You just keep on coming and, and, and let the Holy Spirit Amen. do His work, right? And as you hear the Word of God, you will then come to the place where you go, ah, oh, I got it. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's pray. Thank you for coming this morning. God bless you all. Don't forget to text me. Everybody on that? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your Word and uh, for how you're sowing it. Uh, that seed into our heart, Lord, uh, and we receive it, Lord. We receive it. Amen. By faith, we receive it. In Jesus' name, we receive it. Amen. And let it be rooted and grounded in our heart. Let our, the uh, sonship, our, our identity in you, Lord, let it uh, take root and take hold that we can know and be confident of who we are in you, that we can understand that, Lord mm. Jesus. Amen. And that we would then continue just as a result, Lord, from it. Not because of our own, uh, our own idea, Lord, but from you, Lord. We will just automatically be changed and walk in it. Thank you for your word, Lord. Uh, bless each one, Lord. We pray we can hear from you in the, in the sanctuary as well, Lord, as we worship you and give you all the glory because only you are worthy. We pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 And before you leave, I just want to, because he's talking about emailing, we can just get something right now. Are you guys okay with 8 o'clock or what's up with, is 8, eight o'clock okay? Eight. You guys okay with that? Yeah. As Anyone? long as they say it's okay, yeah. Okay, so we well, need yeah, to make sure. Yeah, we got to get that worked out. Okay, so you email then and let them know. Cause yeah, but for right now, until we do get that. But that's well, not 8 o'clock yet. 8.30. 8.30. 8 8 next week, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I put it over there because I want to